Analysis is urine analysis, and that is a, a screening system where it screens your urine. You should do it every, if you're serious, if you're serious about it, every two weeks. It screens it for benzos, cannabinoids, opiates, diazepam, uh, amphetamines, methamphetamines, ketamine, and it screens your urine every two weeks for that. And if your urine sh it shows up clean, then you should do the same in two weeks time and so on and so on and so on until you come into court. And there's a real positive visceral impact of having 10 or 12 of these things handed into a judge and they're peeling through them one after the other. Very few people do this, but if you do it, it creates a tremendous impression as far as the judge is concerned because it costs nothing to say I'm off the stuff. They don't believe it anyway. But if you say I'm off the stuff and you give them all that, 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 that documentary evidence, well then that shows you really are off. And if you want them to give you a favor, and to not convict you, you need to give something in return. So your analysis is the best thing you can do. Well, if you've been, I mean, if you've been caught in possession of drugs today, regardless of when the summons arrives, and it will arrive, that's 100% guarantee. You can't guarantee much in life, but I can guarantee you a summons for court for drugs. They will summons you. You should start your analysis. I recommend that to every one of my clients. Your analysis is really important. It's scientific. You go to your GP, your GP nominates someone who can do your analysis. It does a bit of a cost involved. But if you want the court ultimately to leave you with your record, they are more inclined to do that if they know it's cost you a bit of money. If it's cost you time and money to do it, it means that your protestations of I'm through with drugs carry more weight. And so the judge then can be more inclined to say, all right, I'll take a chance on this person. I won't convict him. What's the difference between being caught in possession of, we say, cannabis or caught in possession of cocaine? Well, a couple of different things. Cannabis is, is treated seriously. Cocaine is treated at a much higher severity, as is obviously heroin, uh, amphetamine, ketamine, uh, all these drugs are treated far more seriously than in cannabis because people have died from consuming cocaine and heroin and ketamine or variations of those. God knows what's inside in some of these substances. But so they're treated more seriously and they attract, if you're caught in possession, uh, a custodial sentence. Um, cannabis on its, on its own for the first time doesn't necessarily uh, and not even on the second time, but if you're caught the third time with cannabis, you will be looking at an automatic dis um, conviction. Uh, the other substances you'll be convicted of and you could be jailed. So the cannabis is differentiated from the, from the rest as being seen as less serious. Still serious, but less serious than the other substances.